I set myself the challenge of painting this here fancy knoll lad in an hour. And I almost managed it. It took a little bit longer than an hour, but I did give it a good go. Now, this video is sponsored by Broken Anvil and their Forged Kickstarter campaign, and this knoll is from that campaign. We will hear a little bit more about that later on, but I decided to go for a bit of a slap chop method with this fella. See, the thing is, don't know about you, fellow DMs, but quite often I find that I have a shed load of things to paint and not enough time to paint them in. And whilst I would absolutely love to spend six hours on each knoll in a squad of six, frankly, that's not happening. I need models quick and I need them to be nice. Nice enough to look at, nice enough to stand out on the tabletop, but sometimes you just don't have the time to spend on putting absolutely ages into every single enemy combatant in your campaign. So with that in mind, an hour was the target. Went for a little bit of a slap chop approach for this, in fact. So, of course, you start by priming the model black. I have to say, once you prime this one black, you get a lot of the nice details out in terms of the roughness of the armor, the kind of armor plates. Remember, remember to always clean out your airbrush. Don't look in there, don't look in there. I did clean it out, I pri- I totally forgot. Now, I also decided to use this as an opportunity to test out some of the Too Thin Coats paint range, and you know what? I was quite impressed with the grey. The grey was nice, worked well for dry brushing, nice consistency to it. Of course, with the slap chop method, you need to do a layer of black, then you need to dry brush grey, then you need to dry brush white, and the grey had decent coverage. I did like it. Once that was done, it was onto the white, and again, I was pretty impressed with it. You can sometimes find that when you dry brush white, you get a bit of that chalky texture, which, depending on what you want out of the model, is not always a bad thing, but I didn't need to do much in terms of keeping the brush damp to avoid that with this one. I actually thought it was a really good paint. It worked super well for this, and I think it's probably something I'm going to be returning to in the future for this style of painting, because the consistency was spot on, and it had just the right texture on the finish. Now, having said we were going to do a bit of slap chop action, that's not necessarily what I completely went with for this model in the end, because I decided not to use contrast on the cloth. Instead, I wanted to use washes. So I've used washes for this method quite a few times, and you get a really nice desaturated look out of them. It just makes it slightly darker, I guess a bit more grim dark than using a full-on contrast paint. And so that's what I decided to do with this knoll. I felt like the cloak could do with being just that bit desaturated compared to going with a full contrast. Now at this point we're like, I want to say 20 minutes in and I'm starting to realise that maybe I'm not going to get the full, <laughs> the full thing done in the hour I've set myself. But I was kind of okay with it because I was just enjoying painting the cloth on this knoll. I really like the cloth on this knoll. I'm a big fan of bandages on models. You get a lot of like easy depth and highlight stuff on bandages, especially when you've underpainted it or dry brushed it like we did earlier. So I just really enjoy that aspect of this model. I think it works really well and it's really fun to paint. Now at this point I did move into using contrast because frankly skin and fur is so much easier to do when you're using contrast. And I use Dark Oath Flesh for this because I felt like that was the right kind of mix. I actually wanted the knoll to be a bit pale, so I wasn't sure on this one, but the end result seems to have worked okay. I did thin it down ever so slightly. Now before we get onto this lad's armour, if you're curious about the mini I'm painting in this video, it's from Broken Anvil's new campaign, Forged. Live right now on Kickstarter, Forged is a massive campaign to bring high quality, low cost tabletop miniatures and original 5e compatible content to gamers everywhere. Forged includes beautifully sculpted 28mm heroic scale pre-assembled plastic miniatures as well as 5e compatible content and there are some really amazing goodies waiting to be unlocked. Backers can choose the Heroes box which features an exciting array of brave and daring characters from an inconspicuous catfolk wizard to an imposing centaur druid. The Encounter box might be more your style with its squads of formidable enemies like the knoll we're painting today, orcs and wraiths and one very creepy lich. Backers also have the option to get both heroes and enemy squads with the Adventure Box. And there's also an Adventure STL bundle for you DIYers out there, so you can 3D print the heroes and enemies at home. I love that option, by the way. But if you want the very best value this campaign has to offer, then pledging for the Forge Masters bundle will get you all the minis in the Adventure Box, plus the 5e Adventure module, plus the Creature Compendium, plus the 7-piece Dragon bundle, plus the 45-piece Terrain bundle. The list goes on. These bundles are being offered at Kickstarter exclusive prices by supporting this campaign you'll get an excellent deal on broken anvils creations before they hit retail and you'll be helping the bam team achieve their dream of making these minis a reality the campaign is live right now on kickstarter and you can see these awesome designs yourself by checking out the links in the description below now here's where things got a little bit interesting because i decided to use the two thin coats plate armor 
and I did something that you are not supposed to do. It's right there in the name, it's called two thin coats, so naturally I used a watered down single coat. Now, I did that for a reason, it's so that the shading underneath would come through better. It's a technique I've used on plenty of other models and it's come through really, really well. And I was really hoping that I would get kind of the same thing from this. Now, admittedly, when I've done this before, I've used Lead Belcher and it has generally done the trick. This time around though, I found that it didn't have quite the same, like, opacity. It actually obscured more of the shading than I thought it would, which presented a bit of a challenge. However, there is an answer to problems like this, and it's nothing as drastic as stripping the model or anything. It's called turning to your lord and saviour, the king of all washes, Agrax Earthshade. Now, admittedly, I used to be a Nuln Oil lad, but I'm starting to feel like Agrax Earthshade might be my go-to, especially since mine, and I don't know whether this is just the bottle that I have, whether it's been sat out too long or something, mine has a bit of like an oily finish to it. It tends to set quite glossy, which... As I was putting it on, I kind of was hoping it would, because I thought to myself, I've got a lot of the shading is gone now. If I do the Agrax, if it gives it that nice kind of oil look, and then we tone it down with a bit of black dry brushing, we should get some nice, dirty, battered, weather-beaten armour, and a bit of a nasty sword out of it. Before that though, I threw a bit of skeleton horde on a few details on the helmet and on this skull on the belt, just enough to give it a bit of nice shading without looking too much like the skin. It was also at this point that I decided that just one wash of Caraburg Crimson wasn't doing it for me for the cloth. I felt like it needed to be a bit richer, still not massively oversaturated, but just have a bit more depth to it. And I wanted the shade to be just a little more purple. So I went over the top of it with some Drucci Violet. I don't think there was anything wrong with it before, but I just wanted to give it that little bit extra something, you know? I belatedly decided as well that I just didn't like the hair on the back coming out of the hood and over the cloak being the same colour as the skin. I wasn't sure whether it was a mane for the knoll or whether it was a case of it being part of the cloak itself, but it just didn't sit right at being the same colour, so a bit of black Templar contrast sorted that right out. Once that was done, it was time to break out the Doom Death Black, extremely heavy metal name there, and just dry brush a bit of it onto the armour panels and onto the sword. I just wanted to give it a bit of dirt, a bit of weathering, a bit of kind of tarnishing, make it look more gritty, more grim, take some of the shine down, just make the armour look really scrappy and the weapon really ugly. For some reason, I just find metal armour and weapons that have been dulled down just really like aesthetically pleasing. Once I'd done that, it was time to glue his arms on and then do a bit of basing. Now it's time to come clean and admit that at this point, I was past the hour mark. This was like an hour and five minutes, so I wasn't far off what I was aiming for for this guy, and he's already at a point where I'd be perfectly happy plonking six of these down on the table and beating the party to death with them, but I reckon with a bit more planning and without the stage of weathering down those armour plates, I probably could have got more done in terms of the small details. Luckily, as always, basing took no time at all because I just did some PVA glue on the base and then stuck it in basing material. Job done! Overall, I'm pretty happy with how this guy turned out. Yeah, the armour isn't exactly what I was aiming for, but I was able to get a similar effect to what I was after by doing a bit of weathering and a bit of dry brushing after the fact, using the Agrax Earthshade, which I knew would give it a kind of glossy finish, did work quite nicely. I do like the fact that you've got that kind of glistening under each plate. It makes it look like oily and old and just not very well taken care of, which given the state of the sword especially, like I feel like that's a big like feature for this particular model. I feel like you want to have a bit of grime, a bit of muck. You want it to look well used, not well taken care of and I got that feel from the armour in the end. I'm super happy with how the cloth came out. It was only two washes, but you know what? Doing that underpainting first, building up the contrast between the dark and the light, and then just putting something super thin over the top, you can't really go wrong, to be honest. It's going to look decent no matter what you do. Well, I say that, maybe don't slather it on. A little bit of restraint is probably good. Overall, I just really enjoyed painting this. It was a fun model to do. I even left the arms off so I could try and do it properly. And I'd happily paint more of these. The final time taken was 1 hour 15, which I'm okay with. Huge thank you to Broken Anvil for sponsoring this video. Again, links to the Kickstarter are in the description. Do go and check it out. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.